Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today we're gonna be messing around with a Lenovo slash IBM server, and I'm gonna try and see if I can I can take the the discs in there and clone them over to a uh, an external disk to clone them back into internal disks again. Um, yeah. Um, for the regular viewer, I'm back from my vacation in Portugal, and I've managed to uh, get myself a, a sore throat um, here in the cold Danish autumn weather. Yeah, it's really hard coming from at least 25 degrees and landing in 10 degrees. So, yeah, that's a tough one. The idea of just going into the airport and getting myself a new ticket back to Portugal did cross my mind. I'm gonna try and um, boot on a USB stick and see if I can uh, connect. I'm gonna be using Clone Scylla to try and take this operating system that is on this server, the awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3650 Model 4, and clone that out to an external disk. This video is sponsored by me and my Playhouse shop. So um, I'll just show you that for a little bit, just a second. So here is my Playhouse shop. It's on myplayhouse.dk, that's for Denmark, for slash shop. And there is English and Danish. I, uh, yeah, I should really give up on the Danish one. Um, but in here you can see there is multiple things that I'm trying to, um, to, uh, to get rid of. And I'm hoping that you will go and check some of that stuff out. It might just be something that you need. There is also, you can go into server parts here and you can you can get just memory. There are all the different memory blocks. There's even three pages of memories. I'm not sure. Oh, well, there's actually a lot on the last one as well. So everything from, I think the smallest ones in there is like half a gigabyte and then there's up to uh, 32 gigabytes of memory blocks. I have a few of those. So there's that and then there's uh, storage controllers let's just take something random and then um, yeah um, I have some um, Dell Ecolotic boxes without discs they're very cheap but now that we are here I should get my USB stick with clone sealer it's right there so back in the data center let's just we have this computer uh, we have a C drive that's the one that I'm interested in cloning the other one doesn't care. Um, the idea of this is, uh, this is just a test computer. Uh, we're just doing this for the exercise, but a scenario would be if, uh, let's say that this was a very important machine. Some consultant from some faraway country has flown in to your country, spent two weeks configurating this very special system that is on this computer and now the let's just say the drive the data drive have run out of space or maybe it turns out that you have to pay licenses per disk that is in it and I have put eight drives in here so this is a blotchy fortune and there's only 800 gigabytes there so it might be beneficial to just change that to one hard drive with one terabyte on there and maybe the licensing of this software is so stupid that that would make sense for me. Any scenario where it would be beneficial to take the operating system off of the server and putting it back on different drives. Um, it could also be that the operating system had to go onto another server, but well, in this instance we're just going to be putting it back on the same server. So we have that, um, it's an just under a hundred gigabyte uh, operating system drive and we're gonna play along as if that's the one we really want to clone and right now it's um, it's in two of these drives over here the first two I guess and then the last six is the data drive so we're gonna take um, we're gonna clone that and uh, put it onto something else I am um, I downloaded Clone Sealer, the newest available version, I guess, uh, and put it on my carry around USB sticky here, which has some multi boot. So we're gonna pop that in, and then we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I was thinking about trying to use an external hard drive over USB. Let's see if we can do that. 
that could be very interesting. Also, the server over here actually has four slots available that we are at present time not using. But we could also run into the issue that Scylla maybe doesn't like the RAID controller or maybe doesn't like the USB thing key here. So, yeah, let's see how far we get. Okay, Samsung SSD. Put down. So we have a we have a terabyte here that we can we can put in and we can clone that uh, put our 100 gigabytes and clone it out to a one terabyte. Uh, at that point, we could probably take the hard drive and then put it in the server. No, we can't because the hard drive has to um, the drives that we have to put in here. We have to go into the RAID controller and configure a virtual drive. These are all on virtual drives on the RAID controller. They're not on the on the drives itself. So that's a very big question mark if if that will work with the USB stick. So uh, yeah, and I see that I need the mouse. So we're gonna pop that out. I see that I need the two USB sticks on the front. So we're gonna pop the mouse out. Now we're gonna pop in this hard drive. That didn't immediately pop up. Let's see if it if it's on the device. Let's see disk management. Did anything of a terabyte pop up? There is a remote. Oh, that must be inside. I have something. Four gigabyte. Yeah, actually, there's something here. Uh, so that's probably a, a good drive. The operating system here sees the drive. That's that's kind of okay. So let's pop the let's pop the USB pin in. Okay, the other way. There. And I'll try and boot. And um, I have a multi boot on the USB uh, Ventoy. So, um, yeah, let's, let's see if that happens for me. And the server is booting. So, very shortly, we should get the options down here to pick our boot device. And we need to go and pick the USB thing so that it will boot off of the USB. Um, this always takes a way longer when you're waiting for it. Now it's there, F12, and it registrates that we have pressed F12. So now we get the boot options, and we are gonna be, uh, let's see, there is the internal hypervisor inside of the server, and then there is a USB port in the front. I think that's the one we want, so let's try that one. We are we have plugged in two USB devices out here in the front, so ah, good. We got the right one, and I see the clone chiller has put itself here on third place. I have a lot of other stuff on this USB, so um, let's try and see if this will work. So we get different options. This is the version of clone chiller that I downloaded. They had multiple options on their website a little bit of a mess there we'll just try the top one and we get to uh, select the language keyboard thing i think um, i have this keyboard english thing so let's continue with that one and keep the yeah uh, i'm good with that there and it's loading then we have Let's see, we have start clone siller and then we have a shell uh, command line thing. Uh, let's let's go for the for this one. Then we can we can make an image file, device to image. Uh, I, I think that is what we want. Uh, we could also do device to device, but then I'm gonna run into trouble with. Um, I have to go in and and create the virtual drive on the server and remote resources remote destination uh, light server light client so uh, device to image is a good choice and we have local device yes a lot of other good options here we're gonna pick the local devices see it uh, it does claim that it will find a usb drive so uh, that looks good and it continue oh. If you want to use USB devices, please insert USB into machine. Hmm. 
should be there. Had already done that. Let's see, finding all disks and partitions. It has the generic fast drive, that's the four gigabyte fast drive that is inside. Then it has the, the one terabyte uh, hard drive, and then it has, okay, control C to exit. Okay, which one is the source? Um, I think we're gonna run into trouble here. It's not seeing the rate controller at all. So that one is the four gigabyte one. This one is the one terabyte one. This is the Samsung drive that we are booting on. And this one is, well, these two are the Samsung thing that we are booting on. Uh, that's a bit of a fail. Hmm. Okay, so file Cilla most definitely did not work. Um, I'm not sure that we're gonna get this up and running at all, but um, well, I'm trying this this uh, different program. It's right there. Just to not give up right away. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start. We're trying to make a backup. Disk and partitions. Okay, partition backup. What does it see? Well, it also does not see the RAID controller. It sees the 4GB USB pin, it sees the 1TB hard drive, and it sees the boot uh, thing. So, eh, epic fail. That's really unfortunate. Somehow this video turned into uh, one of those how not to videos. Um, I got so many suggestions in a previous video where I tried to take the, the RAID uh, 5 drives out and put some other ones in and then tried to import the drive that I took it out into the same server again, which also failed. Uh, there was a lot of suggestions that I should try clone Ziller, and um, it apparently doesn't clone on a RAID controller. It, um, I did go and check the internet, and the internet also says that it doesn't do that. Which is, eh, but why? It wouldn't be too much of a hassle for it to see the virtual drive and clone that. I don't know why they haven't put that in there, I would have, but I guess it wasn't supposed to be this easy. If you have some other method that you know works, where you can, well, I was trying with some live CDs to put a live CD in there that would see the RAID controller and, and take the image out and put it back in. If you know of a system that will actually do that, do leave it in the comments below so that I can get that info and everybody else can read that info as well because uh, yeah, file cellular was a no-go and this acronic, I can't say, acronis thing. Um, both does not see the RAID controller. Uh, all the drives, the virtual drives that are presented to the operating system from the RAID controller, it just dismisses that. It only sees the SSDs and things in front. So yeah, another failure video. So very disappointing. So um, yeah, I'll just leave you with, uh, remember to go check out my little shop. Just, you don't have to buy anything, you just go and check if I have anything that you might buy later. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.